we all know we were talking about before how we people are going to this trend of local grown organic Kentucky Proud products. They want to know where their food came from, who made it, and how they made it. And it's even better if they can grow it because they know exactly how it was done, or if they can go to a farmer's market and they can ask the farmer and say, how did you grow these beans? How long did it take to produce this food? What chemicals were used, if any? And that's an important thing for them. And today, we're going to teach you how to get more beans for your buck and have all of that local grown product in one. And first, we're going to talk about some of the benefits. One of the benefits I already talked about, local grown. Local grown products, you know where they came from, but that's not the only benefit. They are easily accessible if you produce them in your home. You don't have to go to the store, waste your gas to go to the store in order to buy that product. In order to buy that product, and you also, there's one big thing that is to me, I don't know about all of you all, but when it comes to food, it's got to taste good. I don't care if it's 40 cents or $40. It better taste good if I'm going to eat it. And I will only eat homegrown canned green beans because I hate the ones from the store. And if my mom will ask me, she'll be like, I'm having green beans for dinner. Do you want some? Not unless they're from the can homegrown. <laughs> but, um, and today we're going to do a little experiment. And we're going to blindfold one of you and see if you can determine which bean is homegrown and which is from the store. So, we're going to pick somebody. How about Mr. Connor? <laughs> Will you be bonded? You have easy target right, <laughs> right on your chest. <laughs> easy target for her. Okay. okay. You're going to tell us which one is which. Did you get off your dress pants for the summer? Yeah, I did. No, we had Cole's cash. And I only had I half, my, half the money. Yeah. Pants, we got the shirt. Well, there you go. Sorry. You blindfold her. Miss Caitlin's gonna blindfold you. Nice. I would. It's like it's a dog around here. Oh, jeez. Are you gonna feed me too? Or? Reach your hand up. You're gonna. You're gonna take part of his part. Okay. So, okay. Is that the end? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Taste it, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now taste these. So you're saying about these? Here you go. <laughs> mm. Which ones? Oh, those are the canned ones? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what's there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, just, I feel like Bobby Flay up here. You know? <laughs> There's so much more flavor in them. I mean, you can tell that they're they're actually there's there's thought and, and feeling invoked through those those green beans. <laughs> I feel like they're talking to my taste buds as they get you know, right through my mouth. It's just, just something amazing about them beans. So. You want to finish them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Connor. No problem. Okay, so if you all you all haven't got these, these are the store bought beans. So we're gonna pass these around. You don't have you to all eat them. Can get a sample. <laughs> and um, the first bean that you all have now, those are actually the canned green beans. Those are Roma green beans. Some beans have strings, like these specifically do not have strings. Romas do not either. I hate strings in these. They're so gritty and nasty, so I don't prefer those. But some of the ones from the store, actually those do have the strings, and that also adds to the taste of the, and a lot of people said that they have a tin taste, which isn't very good. I do apologize for the beans. They did come from Walmart just because our growing season at home is over with and ours is already in the jar. So they do look kind of bad for beans, but you get the idea. It's the general idea that matters. Since you all have tasted them now, though, do you want to hear how to can them so you know how you can do this on your own? Mr. Connor, especially, yeah, the taste. Toss to your taste. Yeah, all, <laughs> okay, so we'll go through the process of showing you all. Okay. So first you need to either pick your beans or you can buy them from the store. I prefer picking your own, growing them at home, that kind of thing. There's no telling how many quarts of beans we put up each year. The beans that I brought today are from 2011. They're still just fine. I mean, you put them in a pan, put some oil, bacon grease, whatever you want with them, and they're going to taste like they did when you first canned them. Um, after you've got the beans, you're going to break them and make sure there are no bad spots. Now, like I said on these, there are a lot of bad spots, but it's Walmart. See They're how not be they have this, yeah. these dark spots? Those are the bad spots. You have to just pick those out. But y'all don't touch your yet. We're just going to show you first. After you have broke your green beans, you're going to wash them. 
There's the, oh, oh it's over here. Okay, we got our water, and since we don't have a sink, we don't have a sink, so it's kind of hard to wash green beans without the sink. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the beans that we've already broken and put them in the strainer and pour the water over top of them just to kind of give you all an idea. And if you can't see it, you can actually stand up or come up here if you'd like to. And you just kind of rub your hands around in it. Make sure all the dirt's off and you can check again for bad spots if there are any bad spots that you might have missed because it's a long process and you have to keep picking them. You just like you out. would in the sink. I mean, it's the same concept. Yeah. We just don't have a sink in here. Okay, and then you strain them off really good. And then you go and you put them in the jar. It takes a little bit for that too. But, and you stuff them in there. And um, you fill them up almost full, but not quite. You don't want it to be too full. And you don't have to stuff them so tightly either. But you can kind of leave some room because you have to put water in there and also salt, which we'll do in a second. And you can also, an easier way, I didn't have a funnel to bring with me today, but you can put a funnel to put them in there. It's a lot easier. Another thing we couldn't do during class was you would actually kind of boil the jars, but you want to make sure they're sterilized yeah. and that kind of thing. Also, with your lids and your rings, while you're cleaning the jars, you can go ahead and do that too while you're already in the water. And with the, the lids, you do have to buy new lids. Here are the lids. You have to buy new ones of these each year because this, they have a seal that needs to be properly sealed. These are old because I didn't want to bring new ones to take a chance on running them. And here's the ring. And actually, you put, after you get your jar full, first you're going to put salt in. A teaspoon of salt. And you just put it right on top. And after you do that, you fill it up with water about an inch from the top. You can see the salt going in. And that was one teaspoon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you're going to heat these up before you actually put them on. So it's going to be a little bit different. And when they get done, they'll look like this. You can actually take the ring off and reuse the rings for your next season. So, I mean, so you don't have to have that on there. Um, but that's the general idea how to can them. Some supporting information, if you want to take a look at it. You, in order to start your beans, or to start canning your beans, the jars, the mason jars, they come with, whenever you first buy them, they'll come with the lid and they'll come with the ring. And you can, they'll come purchase just like this in a pack of 12. That's about $9.99 for one of these. And the pressure cooker, which is right here, which we're going to talk about in just a little bit, is between $75 to $200, depending on where you find it at. And also, if you grow your beans, it's only $5.49 for like a pound of beans and for the seed. And we can grow 150-foot rows, two of those, which would yield about 60 quarts for us, depending on what kind of season it is. And if you want to buy your beans from the store in order to can, it can be between $25 to $80 for a bushel, which will yield about 20, 24 quarts. And it depends on the season with that. If it's a good season, they'll be lower in price. If it's a bad season, they'll be higher in price. And also, if you think about that and you think about the price of store-bought beans, store-bought beans are like for one can, which was what I passed around to you all, from the store is like one dollar and there's two and a half of those in one of these quarts. If you think about the price of that being $5.49 if you grow your own and just a little bit of extra labor, that's $5.49 that will bring you 60 quarts versus paying $150 for the amount of beans that it would cost to get that from the store. So they actually are cheaper in cost if you can them on your own. It's just a little extra labor. But if you think about that taste too, that flavor is worth the work in the end. And I know, like, when we sell our vegetables at the Farmer's Market in Hardin County, when we sell beans, I mean, if it's, you know, in the season, everybody's got beans, it could be like $1.75 a pound. But if it's, like, beginning of June, end of May, and nobody has beans, you can get almost up to $3 a pound. I know that sounds, like, expensive to buy your beans. I mean, if you don't want to buy them from the Farmer's Market, you can go to Walmart and you can grow them yourself. So, that kind of thing. I just, like, 
homegrown green beans better than store bought ones. There's no, I mean, you can't compare them. Okay, so let's get back to the process. After you have got your beans in the jar, the lid on, salt in, you need to first put water in the pressure cooker. I don't have enough water because we don't have a sink here, of course. I only had this one pitcher. But you're going to fill it up in the bottom of the pressure cooker, about two inches, three, so let's grab depending. The and next, you're going to, in some jars, some pressure cookers have racks in them, but this one, I don't have a rack in it right now. But you can. Another thing, the older canners have seven, like you can put seven quarts in it. The newer ones, you can only hold five. And some of them even have even larger numbers, like 16 quarts of. I've never seen one myself, but I've heard of them, so yeah, depends on how big you want to go with the canning process. So after that, this is the worst part. I'm not gonna lie. The worst part of the pressure cooking is the lid. The lids on these things are so tricky; they do not want to go on, and it's hard to get them off as well. Okay, there we go. And you actually, it'll lock. You can hear it click, and this is called a jiggler in my house because it makes a jiggling noise. That's what we call it at my house too. I don't know if that's like the technical term, but it's the jiggler. It jiggles. It's just a little weight and it gives different amounts of pressure. You can see it has like 15, 10, 5, depending on what you're canning, you'll change that around. And um, so for beans, you want to put it on 10. And first, some people, I prefer to let some of the steam out for like 10 minutes. Some people say you don't have to. But it lets some of the air come out of it and to make sure that it's not going to seep through the sides if your seal isn't sealed tightly. Now I know in my household, my mom will not can beans at all. She's afraid that this thing will pop off and go through the ceiling. So you have to be really There's careful. so much pressure built up in it, so my dad always cans. <laughs> okay, right. and after that, you want to put your stove on high heat. And after it gets to a certain pressure, after it starts, it'll start rattling. And it'll go crazy, making this noise, and there'll be steam coming out. Yeah, of it. steam will come up. And after it starts rattling and it doesn't stop rattling, that means that your pressure is probably getting too high, so you need to reduce your heat until it rattles, and then it'll stop for a second. Rattle, and then stop for a second. And just keep that constant noise level to ensure that you cook it at the right poundage. All right, so after they're done and you're going to take your lid off, the best way to get them out, cook them for. Oh, my bad. Sorry. <laughs> Cook them for 25 minutes. Okay. Great. And then after that, after they're done jiggling, that kind of thing, after they've done cooked, you're going to take your lid off. Now, we just let them be in the thing until they cool down. She has an empty little jar yeah. grabber. You usually have to wait at least 45 minutes to an hour before you open the lid again because the pressure and the steam is extremely hot. So be careful whenever you are opening the lid because the steam will still seep out. So you turn your lid and unlock it. You can take your jiggler off and once again mess with the fire lid. And here, this is a jar remover. It just sits right around the top of the jar. I also sell some cool ones at Walmart. It's right ready. up like that. And it's pretty neat to put it on like a towel so it doesn't burn the counter or a wooden cookie sheet like you all brought in, something like that, cutting board. With the grabber, they also have some cool ones at Walmart. I think they're actually made by like Mason Jar, the company, whatever. But Ball, I guess is the name. I couldn't think of it. Anyways, it's like a glove and you can stick your hand on it and actually pick them up if you don't want to use the grabber. They're really cool. Okay, and after you've done that, you take them. You store them in the cabinet. You don't have to drive to Walmart whenever you want green beans. If you don't feel like going to the store, you want to cook at home, you just grab them out of the cabinet. And another thing, sometimes they may hear that. That means it's not sealed. And if it's not sealed, that means that they're not going to be keep kept as long. So you should probably eat those first. Sometimes it'll happen like we do it in usually two or three jars out of like 60 or 70 you'll do it, but not all the time. You'll hear them pop as they get done. Yeah, as they're cooling, you'll hear that pop. So like Just if your like canner holds seven, you hear seven little pops, they're sealed. Yeah. And then you can start with your next set of seven to put into the pressure cooker. Is there any questions so far? No. Okay, now do you all get to do it. You each have your beans. I've seen that some of you have already broken them, but that's okay. 
And if some of you all want to break some of these that other people didn't, since they had to leave, so we can have enough to fill up Ross jar. And I'll pass this around so you can put your. You can break the ends off in the bad spots like we showed you all previously. Do you want to break these? Oh, she's and you can put, after you all get them in, we'll collect your ends and we'll also collect your good spots that you're going to actually be cooking. And once again, I want you all to think about the actual benefits of the canned baked beans. I know a lot of y'all saying it took a long time to explain that, and I don't know how to do that. That's a lot of work, but it's worth it in the end. If y'all remember that good taste, Ben was saying his taste buds were speaking to him. That taste is worth it in the end. And you can add a lot of different things to them. Like we, you said you didn't like bacon, but we put sometimes like country ham in them to give them a different flavor, and it really adds to the taste of the canned beans. As you're breaking them, you know, just watch for bad spots like the brown ones or the bug holes, that kind of thing. Break your ends off. Usually probably three to four, like this. Yeah, so if I can have four, five About an inch, inch long. Yeah. Inch, inch and a half is fine. Can someone tell me what the next step that we're going to be doing is? Washing. Washing. Washing? Good. And how about, don't know your name, Miss H. How about you do that since you're good at canning. You like vegetables. <laughs> I love vegetables. This is kind of a long process and you can see that it is a long process, but like I said, it's going to be worth it. And just don't forget to make sure you keep all the bad spots out because they're not very tasty. And these beans, once again, they came from Walmart. If they you grow them yourself. The USA tag, but yeah. If you grow your beans yourself though, they're, you can grow them to however you want them to be, whatever size. And you can make sure that they don't get to this state where they're wilty. Okay, I'm going to go around and collect the good spots that you all have so far. Okay. You know what? Now you gave me one. <laughs> you like doing a good job? Okay, I think this is enough. You all can quit breaking them. You don't have to break that many. Okay, Miss H, come into the honors. All right. Yes, you can put the end spots in there. You all can pass that down. Okay. Can we put the trash in there? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I always notice like when you wash them, um, the dirt will come off and then there'll be spots that you didn't see because they have dirt on them. on top of it, exactly. So I don't like to lay on the ground. Like here. Yeah. You'll get the occasional mist in. And or in and in thrown beans. into the wrong spot because your throat processes get all mixed up whenever you're sitting here breaking beans all day long for hours. That's true. Right. And you can, if you, some people prefer to use a knife on the Romas, which you all ate for the samples that we can. We do use a knife because it's easier, but sometimes it's not. And if you have string beans, they'll have, you have to pull the string down each side so it's easier to not use a knife. Okay, now there is your pre-clean jar. Yes, there do. Wonder. Um, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So just putting these in the jar. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know if it'll funnel. We can try. Sorry. You're fine. Who knows how full we should fill it to? So you have an inch of headspace. Okay. Next. Joe, come up here. You can do the salt. We gotta do the water first. Water. Salt first. Do the salt. Okay. Now at my house we use canon salt, but I learned last week that you can use any kind of salt. Uh, that's salt. 
Yes. Canning salt is supposed to be like pure salt. It doesn't have the anti-caking agent that table salt has. So that's why they usually use canning salt. A yeah. lot of people think of it differently. Some people don't even use salt, which I think is a little different. You can get Keep baking it. It's close because I usually do that stuff after you. Okay. Why not? Okay. Since everybody's left us. Favorite, right? I'll put. I'll put the ring on since everybody's left us. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's fun. Miss Mullins, can you come up? I'm sorry, you're the only one that hasn't done anything. And show us what the next step is, please. It's, it's not under pressure right now, so you're okay. The lid will not blow off, I promise. And see how it has these? You can just kind of put it in that area to wear. remember, like I said, to go over, we can't show you the noise here. It'll rattle and then make sure it rattles, stops, rattles, stops. <laughs> and then after it gets done rattling, you're going to cook it for 25 minutes. And after it's done cooking, you can take your lid off. She's got the little handy dandy jar grabber. Jar grabber. You can use that. Um, yeah. Or you can just let them cool. That's what we usually do because we don't have So one. now you all can all say that you've canned your first set of beans, but not technically canned them. <laughs> You put them in the can at least. All right, so how many pounds of pressure do you use, Miss H? 10. Good job. <laughs> how long do you cook them, Mr. Bagan? Yeah, it's like 25 minutes, I think. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> All right, this is an opinion one. Would you rather grow your green beans or just buy them out of a can? Grow them. Why? Because you know where they came from? All right, so today we have showed y'all how to can your own green beans. I mean, it does take a lot of work, but as Miss Hudgens said a while ago, she likes to taste, but I like pride. Pride is working and getting your own product. Like I said, these are from 2011. These are some that actually 2011, my mammy passed away, and these were our first set of beans without her being there. So if we were kind of like hit and miss, you know, they might not even taste right when we get them out, but we've kind of learned from there. So, I mean, it's just the pride thing for me. I like having something that I've worked for and I can actually see what I'm eating, where it came from, that kind of thing. My family, we sell vegetables at the farmer's market in Hardin County, which is E-Town, if you're familiar with the area. But I mean, our green beans, there's no, none others. I mean, I would not like them out of a can at all. Did you like to add? Yes, I totally agree. Like I said earlier, I will not eat them unless they're out of the can or out of the jar, a mason jar as a matter of fact. I can't eat them from Walmart or anywhere like that because they get the tin taste. But like I said earlier, that's not the only benefits. They are easily accessible. You don't have to drive moisture gas to go get them. You don't have to pay a dollar for them every time. You get them out of the cabinet. If you're low on money, you whatever you can from the summer, you just take them out. And this one's enough. There's five people in my family, and one of these jars will feed all of us in a night as a side for a meal. And also, you know where they came from? It's Kentucky Proud. Good trend these days. And it's also a cheaper cost. So those are a few things that we hope that you all took from today's lesson. I'm sorry that everybody left us, but I'm glad you five decided to stay. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Let's get these ladies around.